Okay, so today we're going to show you how to remove this umbrella holder, scorecard holder and accessory mount. Um, so to start off we need to remove this cap from the top box. Um, it can be difficult to remove, uh, it might actually be glued in. Uh, if that's the case, the only real way to, to remove it without um, is by piercing it uh, through the center using a flathead screwdriver and you'll have to get a replacement cap, unfortunately. Sometimes you can get it out, other times it'll have to be damaged. So we'll remove that cap, put it to the side, and we'll focus on the back plate of the top box. So we need to remove all these screws from the back plate and we'll begin with the remote holder. This is three screws. I'm using a Phillips head screwdriver, uh, attached to a power drill, that way it's a bit easier, quicker and easier to get everything off. You can just use a standard Phillips head screwdriver. Now I like to keep all the screws together, so I'll put these screws back into the casing so that I know where they belong. And the last one there, put that to the side. And now we'll start by removing the rest of these screws. Now I've also got a piece of foam here that I use to keep track of what screws belong where. So I've also got my drill on a low torque setting <clears throat> so that I don't strip the head of any of the screws. So that's the first one out. Place that there. Next two. So again, just putting them into the order that you remove them, easier to remember when reassembling. Two outside screws. And then I'll go over to the handle grips. You can remove these two screws. Take the handle grip off by pulling it, pulling it outwards and I'll put the two screws back into the grip. Easy to remember where they are. Same on the opposite side. One last center screw here. Put that into the center. And now you've got these two screws which will remove the LCD screen. So take these two out. And you'll notice this LCD screen starts to pop out. So we'll put these back into the foam. And as you can see, the LCD screen has removed out of its housing. Now, if I flip it up this way, you can see the cords here. There's two different plugs. Uh, they're both unique. So if you remove them, uh, they'll only go back in one way. So we'll start by removing the top plug, give it a bit of a wiggle and remove that and then the lower. Okay, so that's disconnected your LCD screen. We'll put that to the side and we can put the handle back into position and remove the four outside screws. You don't need to remove these two center screws, just the four outside, which will remove the speed controller. Again, we'll just put those four screws into the foam. Now you can literally just poke the speed controller out of position. You'll see that there's a ribbon here. So this ribbon's attached to a point inside the housing and you can just disconnect the ribbon by lightly pulling on it and it'll disconnect from its connection point and put the speed controller to the side. Now that we've got everything pulled apart, I'll flip the handle back over and we can separate it. So I'll start by removing the back plate and put that to the side and the top plate and put that to the side as well. Now we've got access to the part that we need to remove. So you'll notice there's a nut on this side and the bolt here. So we'll just disconnect and remove the bolt out of the way, the nut should fall out of its housing on the other side, 
and you can literally, I'll just put these down, and now you can slide this entire piece off and fit a replacement one. So, putting the replacement one back into position, sliding it down to there. Now you want to put the bolt through, uh, you want to make sure that the cable's not interfering, which it's not, and putting the nut back into position, fastening tight. So now we just have to reassemble the handle. So I'll start with the top box and I'll put that back into position like so, making sure that this loop on the stem cable runs through here. So you'll see that the loop is wrapped around and I actually just poke this cable out of this housing here so that it doesn't get in the way. And then the backing. So same as this one, I like to tuck this cable through the housing here and it keeps it tucked away and it gives you a bit of access so that when you're plugging it back in you've got a bit of room. And then we reconnect like so. Feel it click back into position. You can see that the plug is in position there as well. And then we'll start by putting the handle grips back on. So two screws on either side. Okay, now we'll need to install the electronics again, so I'll go with the LCD screen first. So we'll connect one plug to the base, and the second plug to the top like so, and tuck the cables in, and you'll feel the LCD screen sit back in a position. If it's not feeling right, then you've most likely pinched on the cable. So just make sure the cables are out of the way and we can fasten that back up. So I'll use the two screws that I removed earlier. Just holding the screen in place with my finger and then fastening up. Like so. And again, okay, so the screen's been reassembled. We'll go with the speed controller next. Now you wanna plug this ribbon back into its port here. So it can be a little bit finicky, a little bit tricky to plug back in because it's quite small. So just have a little bit of patience and you'll feel it click back in, which I've just done there. And then I tuck the cable, the ribbon, behind this port here and just use a little flathead screwdriver to tuck that ribbon behind there so it doesn't get damaged and then speed controller back into place like so. And again the four screws that I've put into the foam. And fasten the speed controller back up. Okay, so now it's just the final screws to reassemble the housing, so the two outside screws. As I said, keeping the, um, the drill on a low torque setting prevents me from stripping any of the screws. And then your two centre ones. Now I'd like to push these in until you feel it. So you're making sure that you're not kind of pinching on any cable or anything like that. That's why you're tucking that cable in on the inside so that it's not going to get pinched. And you fasten that up. And then your final one here. Fasten that up. And then the final thing is to fit 
the holder back into position so with the screws already in final screw so the last thing we can do if you have not damaged this plug is to put the plug back into position if you have damaged one we can get a replacement one fitted in push that into position and the job is complete.